Welcome back. Our simple fix for 26 series on longevity continues now with information on supplements and medications that could help you live longer and healthier. Joining us today is Dr. Melina Jampolis. Welcome back. Hi. Hi, great to see you. Happy New Year. Thank you so much to you as well. Supplements. Get us on board here. What do we have? Well, first of all, there's lots of brands out there. So it's important that you find one that's third party verified. So that's either USP, NSF, or Consumer Lab. You want simple ingredient lists with clear dosages, and you should always talk to a healthcare provider to get the right dose and to make sure that it's not going to interact with any medications that you're taking. So let's jump right in with vitamin D. Everybody knows about this. Up to 40% of Americans are deficient, especially if you have darker skin or you're overweight. It's especially prevalent in the winter, so get your Mm. blood levels checked. It's Mm -hmm. very important. It's linked to bone health, heart health, brain health, and metabolic health. So this is very important. And immune health. So this is an easy fix. Right. Moving on. Vitamin B12. 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 The deficiency is actually very common, especially after 60. You don't absorb it as well. Or if you're taking acid blockers Mm -hmm. or the medication metformin, this is very important for brain health, Mark, and also to prevent (laughs) and also to prevent anemia. Symptoms can actually mimic dementia if your levels are low so get your levels checked and take a supplement B12. if needed b12 okay. and what's this add that to mark's list this is magnesium this is a mineral that has 300 different actions in the body it's i think it's a for, miracle it, supplement. it really is it's important mm-hmm. for blood sugar blood pressure stress sleep you uh. name it 50 uh, more than 50 percent of americans don't get enough from their diet food is always best but many people may need to take a supplement mm-hmm. fiber this may not be the sexiest longevity supplement but it's probably one of the most I love important. fiber. You do? Yes. Well, you're one of the few. Most, More than 90% of Americans don't get enough fiber in their diet. So it's associated with blood sugar control, blood pressure control, cholesterol, and also a decreased risk of dying from respiratory infections. So this is really critical. I like to see supplements that have more than one different kind of fiber so that you hit all your bases when it comes to optimal health. Okay. Mark, this is one you're going to want to pay attention to. Kelly, maybe. Mm-hmm. No, 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 curcumin. Oh, curcumin. Curcumin is from the spice turmeric. It is an extract, and in this supplement form, it can help reduce inflammation, reduce oxidative stress in the brain. It's very important for brain health. And a study of, out of UCLA showed that people who took a supplement for 18 months had a 28% improvement in memory. This is one where you need to do hmm. your homework, though, and do a branded ingredient okay. so that it's more bioavailable for your body to use. Okay, okay great. We're uh, going to take a break, and we're going to talk about GLP-1s when we return. Sit down. We're back with Dr. Melina Jampolis. Okay, we are talking about now GLP-1s. We've moved away from supplements. We've gone into GLP-1s. I keep reading all of these articles that this is going to be the big preventative measure for dementia. Um, What can you tell us about that? Well, this is, first of all, the GLP-1 medications. This is probably one of the most exciting areas of medicine right now because we're learning more and more, it seems like almost every week, Mm -hmm. about their benefits beyond just diabetes control Mm. and weight loss. And one of the reasons is these drugs are very potent at regulating your immune system, which can really help with a lot of head-to-toe diseases, Mm -hmm. including dementia. And studies so far, what we know, this is what we know now, what we know even a week from now may be different, but this is what we know. Decreased risk of heart disease in both diabetics and people who are overweight and obese. Decreased risk of dementia and stroke in diabetics. Research is ongoing looking at people with overweight or obese and even normal weight people, but we don't have that data yet. Decreased risk of visceral fat, which is the fat deep within your belly that's associated with fatty liver disease, with dementia, with diabetes, with cancer, and also decreased risk of inflammation in both diabetics and people with overweight and obesity. So we're not there yet, but we know that the processes which cause dementia are related to inflammation and also abnormal metabolism and insulin resistant. So it makes a lot of sense biologically that they would have that effect even in non-diabetics and potentially, and this is the most exciting area, in people who don't even have weight to lose. Mm-hmm. Although we know obesity is also linked with dementia, so it's sure. kind of hard to unravel all so this So I, I read this article about a woman who does not is not interested in weight loss. She's happy with her weight, and she started, I don't know what this means, microdosing GLP-1s to get the benefits of like what you were talking about, 
decreasing inflammation in the body and all of that. What What is a microdosing? So microdosing isn't actually a medical term. Uh -huh. It's a term that the popular media has used to describe basically going low enough on the dose, whether that's frequency or dosing, to where you don't lose weight. Mm -hmm. So that that's simply, so the smallest effective dose to maintain your weight, not lose weight. Because one of the things that I didn't mention is actually you can lose muscle and bone that's when right. you take these medications. You gotta, you gotta which can accelerate aging. So you have to be really careful. Mm -hmm. So to maintain a healthy weight and just get the purported health benefits. But again, we don't have that scientific research there. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, it's not ready for prime time yet. Okay. What's At metformin? Metformin is a drug that's been around since 1957 for treating diabetes. Okay. And we know that in diabetics, you live longer, you have less risk of heart disease and less risk of dementia. And there's a big trial going on looking at people who are non-diabetics. It's called the TAME study. And hopefully we're going to have the results next year as terms of if this has some longevity benefits, but it's very inexpensive because it's generic and very easy to take a daily pill. Although the GLP-1's first daily pill was just approved and released yesterday by the wow. FDA. Wow, that's so much information. Thank you, Melina. For more information, go to our website.